111. Let's get to The Fall Guy, which is, I think, still in theaters in some places right now, but it's also on VOD. It's directed by David Leach, who also directed Deadpool 2, Hobbs and Shaw, Bullet Train, and a couple others. It stars Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Hannah Waddingham, Teresa Palmer, and a few others. And the synopsis is, a down-and-out stuntman must find the missing star of his ex-girlfriend's blockbuster film. So I remember when this one first premiered at one of the other festivals and it got huge buzz, like this is one of the best movies of the year so far, like one of the best popcorn flicks in a long, long time. And being a huge, huge Ryan Gosling fan, I also love Emily Blunt, but Ryan Gosling being one of my all-time favorite actors, and I think he's really in his prime right now. And so I was very, very excited to see it. And David Leach, if I'm saying that right, sorry if I'm not, I don't think there's a movie of his that I love, but I do like this trend of stuntmen becoming directors. Like, for example, the guy who directed the Extraction movies, the John Wick movies. Like, it's kind of a nice new take on a vision for a movie and for a director where they clearly have a sense for action. They're not just getting 30 smart people around them, they have their own experience, their own ideas, and they're now able to take command and choreograph the action the way they want to. And so I think, at least in all those ones I've named, those are some of the better action movies, choreography-wise, of the last few years, of the last decade. And his other films, like, for example, Deadpool 2, I like Deadpool 2, I thought Hobbs and Shaw was okay, I liked Bullet Train, so I think he definitely is interesting. I don't know if he's ever going to be a best director ever sort of guy, but he seems to always pick interesting action films and stories, with this one being the best example of that. So there were a lot of reasons why I wanted to see it, and I like Aaron Taylor Johnson as well. I think he's really grown as an actor. And also going into this, I've gotten to the point where I'm so tired and frustrated by trailers and giving the entire movie away and the coolest shots away, especially when it comes to action movies, that I've basically avoided all trailers unless I'm in a movie theater. I might watch 10 seconds of something and say, all right, that looks cool, and then move on. I'm really done watching trailers if I can help it. And so this one was the same way. I was like, all right, this seems interesting. Seems like it's going to have a lot of awesome stuff in it. I'm going to save it for the actual experience of watching it. So I only watched a couple little clips of the movie, and that was it. And I think overall, it is one that will continue to grow on me. I thought overall it was quite good. One of my favorites of the year so far. Not a masterpiece, but I think as reviews have been saying, for whatever reason, whether it's a combination of direction, of cast, of writing, this is definitely one of the most refreshing, enjoyable, kind of original action movies, summer blockbusters that I've seen in a long time. And that's another reason why I think. Ryan Gosling is just killing it right now and has been for a while. He just seems to pick original sorts of stories. And that is really across his whole career. But I think like this, Barbie, The Nice Guys, I don't know if it's partly his agent or what, but I think he just has a great eye for picking cool projects. And I think that one thing I was, I don't know if disappointment is the right word, and this comes with not having watched the trailer, the full trailer, is I knew it was about a stuntman who's down on his luck and trying to get back in the business. And that, to me, was by far the best part of the movie. I loved him being on set, doing the stunts, sometimes messing up, trying to get this girl, which is played by Emily Blunt. And that part of the movie was pitch perfect. I love the Taylor Swift moment. All that stuff is awesome. And I think that as it goes on and it gets into this more overarching criminal plot, which I won't really spoil too much. I didn't dislike it, but I was a little disappointed that we spent a lot of time occasionally away from the stunt work world and on the movie set. And so that was something that did sometimes cause me to drift off and not be totally engaged. I think Ryan Gosling I love Emily Blunt, and I think she's great in this, absolutely. But Ryan Gosling is pitch perfect in this. His charisma is off the charts. 
his sort of swagger and stuntman physicality. It really worked perfectly across the boards. He was amazing in it. And he has that effortless Ryan Gosling feel, but he is so good. And the action stuff too, he killed it in that. So I was a big, big fan of him. One of his best of recent years for sure. It looks really good. And I think this is his most well-directed movie as well. I think there's really something interesting about how he shoots certain sequences, not just the action, but there's a very playfulness and refreshing movement to the camera in not just action, but in normal, quiet, dialogue-driven scenes. So I really, really enjoyed it. I think it's one that I'm very excited to go back to as well. As I said, it could maybe someday be a five out of five, perhaps, but it's one that I could see myself showing a lot of people. It just has a lot of cool, whoa, holy crap moments. And I think the ending act, the third act, action sequence is awesome with the car and the chase and the twists and turns. That stuff is great. And the helicopter, I think it is. So there's a lot of great moments in this that it's absolutely worth watching. And I would try and watch it on the biggest screen that you have. So yeah, it's very good. Check it out. That is a heavy, heavy four out of five. 